Well, hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at how to change the front gear cable on a standard mountain, hybrid or kids bike. We're using the Shimano M310 system today, which is also known as Altus, but actually the process is pretty much the same across a whole wide range of shifters and derailers. So let's get to work. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove all the tension on the barrel adjuster. This is out the shifter. And if you tighten it all the way in, going clockwise, looking in this way, righty tighty as they say. And then once you're in all the way, just back off a full revolution, about three twists with the fingers like that. And that will mean there's a little bit of give left and right when it comes to indexing the front derailleur, because as you'll see in a moment, there isn't an adjuster at the derailleur itself. You're then going to want to make sure that the gear is set to gear one because this means the cable has lost all of its tension. And now we're going to release the cable at the front derailleur by just turning this five millimeter hex or Allen key nut. There we go. Just make sure the cable is released completely. Now we're at the front of the bike again now. The forks are just here. We're going to cut this cable about a thumb's width away from where it enters the outer cable. The reason for that is we don't want all the dirt that has accumulated on the old cable to be pulled through and get stuck inside here because otherwise it will cause trouble for the new cable as well. Now using a Phillips head screwdriver, you're going to undo this dust cap. It's only a couple of turns and this part these get lost very easily. So put it somewhere safe and we're gonna reinstall that in a minute. It's not crucial, I've said this in a previous video, but if you lose it, there's more chance of dirt and grime and rain to get inside of here. So it's best to not lose it and put it back when you're finished. Now, if we push the cable through at the point where we cut it a moment ago, the head of the cable should appear. There we go. And then we can just pull this through and that will leave room for the next cable to go through in a moment. With the front derailleur, in this particular model at least, there are no other outer cables. So there's no risk of dirt getting clogged up anywhere else. So we can just unhook the cable from its guides and we can pull the whole thing through. Now you can see the cable for the front derailleur going through here. This is where the old cable we've just removed was before. It shouldn't be mucky, but just make sure you give this a good clean. And if there's anything stuck in the entry or exit point just here, make sure you clean it out. One of the best things you can use actually is the old cable to poke out any dirt or grime that's in there. But make sure that's clean and then you won't have any issues installing the new cable. OK, time to install it. Now, this is an extra part of the job that I like to do, which is getting hold of the outer cable. This is the part that goes in the shifter and just include a couple of drops of oil. Let it sink in. And for me, this just helps the cable glide a little bit better and protect it a little bit from the elements, which will make the cable last longer and be in good condition for a long time. And we can pop that back in there. Now, it's not a terribly fiddly job, but when you want to install the new cable in here, it does go at a slight angle in order to come out the other side. If you remove the outer cable, you will see daylight from one hole to the other. There we go. So by removing the outer cable, you'll be able to see exactly the route the cable needs to make. And then once it's through, you can reinstall this cable and get on with the fitting. Okay, so we're here with the new cable. We can see the hole it needs to go through really clearly now. So through we go and out the other side. Then it's just a case of getting the outer cable, putting the cable through the opening to the outer cable, reattaching the outer cable back into the shifter. And then we can push and feed the whole cable through until it begins to appear at the other end of the outer cable and we can put it through. Once you've done that process, if you just give 
the shifter a turn, can you see the head of the gear cable beginning to move? If there was any issue, the head would get stuck at this point because sometimes it may not completely locate in position just there. You can see me going backwards and forwards. So just give it a bit of a push. And with a bit of tension on the cable pulling backwards, just remove that gear again and you'll know for sure that it is seated exactly where it should be. So we don't forget, now is a good time to put the dust cap back. Sometimes you need to uh, kind of get it stuck on the end of the um, Phillips head screwdriver. But if you've got small thumbs like me, you should just be able to fit it in perfectly. Now it does go in at a bit of an angle. There we go. It doesn't go ever so tight when it's in place. It kind of just clicks really. There we are. That's one less thing to forget afterwards. Now it's a case of feeding the cable through the bottom bracket guide and just pulling it all the way through. And this particular bottom bracket guide has a bit of a guide pipe, a channel. So make sure that the cable, if your bike has the same thing, that it has to fit through there before it goes. Again, make sure it's clean so that nothing will restrict the cable when it comes to attaching to the derailleur. Now, this is where some derailleurs are going to be different. This one has guide clips where when you actually pull the cable down, they will clip into place like that. Now, this particular system works where the derailleur uh, will push outwards. So when you're putting tension onto the uh, derailleur, it's actually pushing downwards like that. So the cable is being pulled down, down the frame. But other derailleurs may work where the cable comes up the other way. So it might actually come up this side and then the pulling down will happen this way instead. So although this is the way it works here, what I would advise you do is to make a note of the cable as it comes out of the derailleur beforehand. And then you get a good idea of which way around things should be. OK, so once the cable is channeled through, however the derailleur works for you, we're going to course this just in here like that. But before we do anything else, we're going to add a bit of tension to the derailleur. And this is how I do it. OK, so we're at the same part of the bike, but we're on the other side of the frame now. And you will see that the derailleur has a lot of spring tension in it. This is how it helps itself go from gear to gear. But when we install the cable, there will be too much slack just from experience. So what you need to do is to pull out the derailleur a little bit and hold it in place. Now, that means there's now a gap about a finger's width between the derailleur and the frame itself. It might not be the most professional way of doing things, but it absolutely works a treat. So if you can find something safe to put between the derailleur and the frame, that will do the trick. And for me. I like to use a rubber handle from a tool that I use. No pressure at all on the derailleur, no pressure at all on the frame. There we go. And that's holding it in place. I should mass produce these, I'll make a fortune. Now that tension is there, we've got a bit more slack on the cable. So if we put it downwards, that's removing all of the existing tension and using a five mil hex or Allen key we can tighten this up. Cable is still in its channel. And there, it's done. Okay, so it's gonna be the moment of truth now. We're gonna remove the thing that was holding the, uh, the derailleur away from the frame, and we'll see how we go. Okay, moment of truth. Going to two, going to three, and then bringing ourselves back down to two. And one. Now, if you remember us adjusting the barrel screw at the beginning, if your derailleur does need a bit of fine tuning left or right, you can move this derailleur. So if you need it to go uh, closer to the outside of the frame on this particular bike, you would be going anti-clockwise because that is pulling on the cable. That's giving it more tension to go over the larger sprockets. And indeed, if it's making a slight rattle in gear one, chances are it needs to go in the other way just to allow the derailleur to move just slightly closer to the frame. Now, this is assuming that the derailleur was working fine before. 
If you did, if there was various scrapings going on or the chain falling off, or indeed you've got a new front derailleur, you will need to sort the limit screws. I will show you how to do this in a different video. Otherwise, we are good to go. Now it's just a case of trimming the cable. I like to pull it out a little bit, trim it about two and a half inches from the end, and then you would have been given a end, an end cap with the cable that you bought. You can pop that on the end, and I use just a pair of cheap wire cutters just to crimp the end. If you're a millionaire and want to buy some crimps particularly for the job in hand, then you're very welcome to. And there we are. So again, if you're getting a scraping noise from gear one, when you're also in gear one on the rear derailleur, it means that you need to have a little bit more adjustment from your barrel screw to enable this to move just slightly closer to the frame. The scraping you're getting is the chain just hitting the inside of here. And similarly, on the other side, if you're getting scraping when this is in gear three and you're in gear seven or eight or whatever is the highest gear, the lowest sprocket on the rear derailleur, and it's out here and it's scraping noise, then again, you need to go anti-clockwise to enable the derailleur to move slightly further this way so it's not touching the chain. That's what the barrel adjuster's for. It allows you to do very slight dialing in, but if the cable is installed correctly at the beginning, honestly, you are sorted. Job done. And we're done. That's it for another video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. I hope it's been helpful. Please remember to like, subscribe, and get notifications as well. And please add a comment for anything you would like me to do a video of in the future to help you with keeping your bike on the road. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time.